This is the wallet-friendly motorcycle you don't need a license for. Using off-the-shelf parts, power tool batteries, and commonly accessible equipment, you too can build an electric bike. Shout out to Thick Bites of Pittsburgh for donating this incredible bike. Your generosity allowed this project to happen. This project can be done with tools that are widely available and parts that can be ordered online. Links are provided in our written documentation. The tools we used were a 3D printer, a soldering iron, wire crimpers, wire cutters, pliers, and any additional tools you need to put the motor on your bike. We used Fusion 360 for designing the 3D printed parts. We converted a traditional bike to an e-bike with two Ryobi 40 volt, four amp hour batteries and a 500 watt Bafang mid-drive motor kit. There are lots of motors on the market. We chose this one for budgeting purposes and superior performance over hub motors. Make sure to follow your local laws regarding max battery power on an electric bike. If you are unable to install the motor on your bike, take it to a local bike shop and they'll be happy to help you. We designed a battery mount that is compatible with a variety of bikes and meant for use with the Ryobi 40 volt batteries. There are links to the design files in the documentation. You can easily manipulate our models to fit various bikes and other brands of 40 volt batteries, as well as make improvements of your own. The 3D printed design holds the battery in place using both a slide guardrail and a clip in and out release. On the back of the design, you can see we've added a V-notch grip that can fit to a range of bike tubes, which allows for our non-circular design to be mounted with much more security. The placement for the holes were chosen so the batteries don't interfere with each other when using both water mounts. We designed the battery mount to have a snug fit for the XT60's wiring, which leads into the battery terminals. The design also comes with a hood that will cover the exposed wires. We printed our design with 20% infill in a vertical orientation in order to reduce the amount of supports required. There will still be some supports that will need to be removed. You can use a soldering iron to install the heat set threaded inserts as we do here. They should be set 90% of the way using the iron and then use something flat to keep pressure on them to ensure that they are flush with the surface as they cool. We soldered the wires to the female ends of the XT60 connectors. One wire needs to be one and a quarter inches long, and the other needs to be one and five eighths inches long. It doesn't matter which is which. Make sure to maintain proper polarity when wiring. Remember that the rounded XT tip is the negative side and the squared end is the positive side. Use no more than a half inch of heat shrink or else the wires won't have enough flexibility. The other end of the wires will be soldered to the power timer contacts that engage with the battery terminals. Generally, while soldering, make sure not to clamp onto the tabs of the power timer contacts, otherwise they won't stay in place. Once again, if you're using heat shrink, make sure to only use what is necessary. If you want to use multiple batteries, you'll need a Y harness to connect them in parallel. To do this, we cut out a piece of insulation from the middle of the wire, and then soldered the end of the second wire to the exposed section. Then applied heat shrink. Do this twice, one for ground and one for the positive terminal. Then connect two male XT60 connectors to the ends going into the battery mounts and one female connector that will lead to the motor. Verify the polarities. It's easier to first screw the 3D printed piece onto the water bottle mounts, then insert the XT and power contact wiring. Gently slide the power timer contacts into its grooves until you hear it click. 
make sure the polarity is correct so the wires don't have to cross. Push the wires into place and snap the XT60 connector into its slot. Use three bolts to screw the wire hood into place to protect your wiring. Connect the batteries and motor together using the Y harness or the motor wire if you are using only one battery and give it a test run. Keep in mind that a throttle assist motor will consume an estimated 25 watt hours per mile and a pedal assist will consume an estimated 15 watt hours per mile. Calculation of your battery power needs should be based on the range requirements of your use application. Remember, have fun with experimenting, but be safe and wear a helmet. The project coordinators are Brandon Barber, Dr. Clark, and Daniel Yates, and the project sponsor is Steven Spencer. Thank you again to Thick Bikes for the incredible donation.